the friend online has been real supportive of you know some of the the videos that we put out we put out these become videos she had put out a book her name is tina plackinger and at some point i think we're going to have her as a guest to talk about her testimony and this is a resource i can tell you now she is online occasionally i'm not sure every day but reading her book is called treading on serpents okay and what it is is a daily devotional for those who are bullied gang stalked or harassed uh you're never going to find a book like this now i told her i'm going to have a giveaway of these books too coming up pretty soon and uh it just goes every day like for example let's see where we are today we're in we're in uh january 17th right it's 16th or 7th 17th okay so here's january 17th i don't know if i can see this would you like me to read uh january 17th can we have more light here and just so i can i'm not sure i can see it right now folks well, we're not getting more light, so we'll we'll read it another time. Uh, but it's good. It's every day. There's scripture quotes and and uh, encouragement and and scriptures that deal with people who feel harassed, targeted, gang stalked, bullied. And uh, excuse me, Trish, I can't seem to get through. Uh, but that's because I need light. And so when you need something, then it, it's, it's not that it happens very often. It's just a, a weird thing, and I can't really seem to. Hey, Trish? Yeah? I need some light here to read this. Okay. Okay. So I don't know if I can do this without my glasses, but I'm going to try. Oh, my goodness. It's really, it's not that small print. It's just, I, you know, just take a look at my video. You'll see I'm not exactly a spring chicken. But um, uh, this is really, really good. Now, this is for uh, January 17th. Thank you for, uh, for putting up with the delay and getting going here with that. Thanks, Trish. Okay, I can see this. Are you guys ready? Okay, so this is from the book Treading on Serpents by Tina Plackinger, and I highly recommend it. And here is today. Wisdom can reveal to us the shame and inner struggles of our perpetrators. Okay, so it says, The Bible tells us that we can have wisdom, but we must ask Father God for it, in James 1, 1, five. When we receive the wisdom, we then reach other, another level of awareness. We can spot the subtle ones, local business owners, churchgoers, and even family members, who are all secretly involved in our demise. The cruel people who harass us will smile as they stab us in the heart. They stay clever in their maneuvers by speaking to us about a God they do not know. Their passive-aggressive nature promises us the things that never come to fruition. Believing them only causes us more frustration and confusion. No matter how hard they try, they hide their involvement. We can see a trait uh, that they each carry amongst themselves. Bondage of sin. We thought they had the upper hand, but they do not. These players are affixed to their actions that eat away at their soul. Some are so deep are, are in so deeply they cannot see straight. Our wisdom will show us what no one else can see, and some of these things can be truly disgraceful. One day at a time, I continue to live, learn, and grow. So January 17th is that uh, we must get more wisdom about who the, who the enemy is. And what they and who these people are around us that seem to be our friends, but are really stat looking for an opportunity to, to just lie and stab us in the back, etc. And um, and anyway, you can see she's got straight talk 
right at you. So it's so those of you who have been in this situation of having people that, uh, well, what she says, local business owners, churchgoers, and even family members who are all secretly involved in in our demise. That's one of the things that has always been very very difficult for me is this this idea that uh, there'd be people you know, that you're working with or, do, you know, it makes it hard to do things because you're afraid to do anything because you think the people that would, you know, if you need people to help you do it, like I say, if you make a film or if you have a project or you want to make a recording in a recording studio, you're going to be dealing, let's say it's a recording studio, you're going to be dealing with people in the studio. You might be dealing with musicians that would be backing you up. You're going to be dealing with engineers and and uh, and a mixer, you know, behind the console that will be actually doing the recording, probably on a Pro Tools session. You're going to be dealing with backup singers, or however your record's going to go. But you're going to have to rely on other people. If you take your car to a mechanic, you're going to have to rely that they're not going to take it out on you. But if they do, the best thing to do is be aware that. It, that there's always a possibility so that you go in prayed up. I just want to add that to this. So therefore, you get the wisdom that it's dangerous out there. So you pray up, Lord, please let nothing happen to my vehicle, to my, to my health with the doctor, to my, uh, my recording at the recording studio or my, you know, my project. I, I guess another thing could be starting a business where you have to hire people, you know, to run, run your, you know, your coffee business, your pizza business, your, your, your home delivery of food business or whatever. The people have to drive and do things and their liabilities. And, and if people are motivated to hurt you, it's usually from the spirit. Okay. Should I say more about the book? You can get this book on Amazon.com by Tina Plackinger. And she had, uh, in her history, she used to be a, uh, a bodybuilder and uh, had some fame with that, I think, in the uh, in the eighties, and then went through a terrible experience and and um, of uh, the, the the unfortunately um, can happen to anyone. She wound up on the wrong side of them, the world, and then she understands obviously that uh, that it's a spiritual battle ultimately, and that's where it has to be defeated. But the one thing she tries to do, and she does very well in this book, is make people aware of just what's going on all around you. You know, you're not just a victim, and at some point you have to become wise enough to understand, okay, so this is on, and I'm one of the millions of people that's in this situation, they're part of the millions of people in that situation, and it's an eternal war. And from there, we beseech our Lord to protect us and to guide us and to help us. And that's really that wing in a prayer, that's all we can do. You know, if the Lord says no... I'm shutting the door. Don't go there today. Don't fly out to L.A. Don't uh, don't take your car in. Don't uh, don't go back to that restaurant. And then another day, okay, now you can go. And you know, because people, because these spirits run around and jump from person to person. You see, so one day they may be there. Another day they're the same people, but different result. They really seem like your friends now. Another thing I might say is that weak people around you, you know, that don't have the same faith you have, you know, they are subject to being demonically possessed to get you. They aren't they don't have any harmful intention toward you. They didn't mean to. It's just they're weak. So they must be for, you have to forgive them. Most of these attacks are coming from the demonic. Okay, they're not coming from an individual that sits there saying, How can I screw up Tina today? Hmm, you know, and, and go after her. I mean, that's, it's, it's more like they're oriented spiritually to a certain thing and that's motivating and that's, that's, that's the, 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 the lifestyle they've chosen. That's, that's the way where Jesus is the way we have chosen and we have been chosen to be on the way, the truth and the life. We have been chosen and they, in a sense, have been chosen to be terrors, to be, to be demonic. And these, if left unchecked, it can wind up in death if someone is stupid enough to walk into a situation where they can get away with it. Yes, so we got to be, you know, so if, if this show does anything, it's to really bring people up in caution. To, to not, I'm not bringing you up, I'm not your father, but I mean, 
you you know what I'm saying, to, 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 to give you the tool. They never gave me these tools at church or at school. I needed them. But aren't you glad to know that at the end of the day, it's still going to come down to knee time and prayer time and beseeching the Lord and, and getting into the word and digging into it and just making it a part of your life. Isn't it great to know that there is that there at all times for all of us? And it's the same for me as it is for you. We, it's universal. It's the same for all of us. We're in the same exact situation. And isn't it nice to know that it's like, no, we didn't codify it. The church, so-called, didn't codify it. God did. That's why it's universal among us all. We all talk the same language. Right? No, I didn't get into the interdimensionality of the whole gig stock thing. I did get into one thing. The time space continuum being, uh, you know, being that Satan and his realm have, have, uh, access to the timeline and can manipulate it. And that's all I'm going to say. I don't want to get off into the weeds, you know, into some esoteric subject matter because I've seen these esoteric teachers lately <laughs> online and talking about cloning and digitizing and, and, uh, you know, the plasma and, and black goo and all the rest of it and CERN and, 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 and soul scalping and, Whatnot, and I and I've just decided I'm going to stay away from that because it's just not helpful. What's helpful is how how do I get through today? I'm facing some real challenges, Lord. How do I get through today? How can I be a help to my brother, to my to my neighbor, to my to, you know what I mean? And I, I got to forgive. I've got to forgive. They look like they were hostile to me the other day, but I'm going to let that go, and I'm going to see if I can help them in some way. You know. That's just got to be at the end of the day. It's got to be that 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 again. The Lord's asking us to do a lot. He's saying it's it's not enough to just kind of let it go. You've got to actually forgive and maybe even bless that person that you've perceived as your enemy and, and take that extra step because that's the only way the gospel is going to spread. That people will be you know inspired to carry forth. I'm inspired today because people prayed over us yesterday. I'm inspired to 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 really do try to do more against sin you know and one of the sins that comes is sometimes when you get older you know and i hate to keep saying older but i look at you know i can't deny it (laughs) um is i hate to be quite frank about it but laziness complacency happens to us you know as we get older and we can tend to let, you know, we have wisdom that we can just let things go a little more, which is good, not jumping on everything that happens. But then sometimes we're lazy to do something or to take an initiative. It, it ha- it's, it, it, you have to be aware that that's part of the aging. It's, no, it's not some conspiracy. It's part of the aging process. So, you know, to, to sort of get into the spirit of Dylan Thomas's, you know, dying, fight the dying of the light. Yeah, you got to fight to the, fight yourself to get up on your feet and do something and i know that i can see it It, this is a big big problem with people it's you sit a little too long and you're going to start drifting you start drifting it's over right right you don't want to drift folks some of the older people i admire i admire roger stone a lot of you may not like his politics some of you do i i just think he's uh and i know i mean i know he's He's uh, he's been a dark guy. He's been a sinner up, you know, up the wazoo. He's been uh, done a lot of dirty tricks and stuff, and now it's coming back on him a little bit with with the Mueller investigation, and all that. But uh, bottom line is, he has a. Let me just explain what what I like about him as an old person. He's got this can do attitude. He shows up for work. He he gets involved in things. He designs a T shirt. He does. You know, he's, uh, I don't know what his age is, but I mean, he's, uh, yeah, he loves God and, you know, he just, he keeps going, but he's a good self-starter. That's what, same thing with with Trump, I admire the self-starting, he doesn't just sit there like, you know, no offense to Reagan, but Reagan kind of just sat there having naps and stuff and (laughs) where Trump just, you know, I mean, he's just like full on and, uh, and and that's, I believe, I seriously, I, I think as you know because it's like nature and age sometimes can be like a stalker can be like a an oppressive force if we give in but i think we need to remember that word self-starting 
And if we're sitting there too long, we need to know. I don't care whether it's to go out and, you know, go get the mail. Whatever it is, you've got to get up on your feet. It may hurt, you know. We've got to all make a better effort at that. And I think we, we will, you know, and not just say, oh, well, you know, this is just uh, where I'm at now. Uh, I'm seeing other people not doing that. And I think what happens is movement is self perpetuating If you keep moving, it perpetuates moving. You know what I mean? And just ask the Lord, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? Because we're here to be actors too, not, you know, uh, I, I know that I've been in the studio a long time where I haven't even seen the sun for a while. I'm like, you know, I'd be really becoming a, you know, just a, just a, you know, the, the, the human being needs to move around and I'm becoming of, uh, acutely aware of that and it's got to be balanced out. But as I struggle with that, I will keep talking about it on these little videos that I do, just those personal struggles. The one right now is to be really self-actualizing and, 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 and really, um, I've got writing I have to do and, and I've got to, you know, some things that I've got to do and some, some, some courage issues. I've got to summon courage. And then I realized last night, the Lord is courage. You know, the Lord will give it, you know, I'm just going to trust in him and go forth. Trust in him and go forth and rather than getting psyched out with this, that, or the other thing. Oh, there are stalkers there. You know, there's, there's bad people. Yeah, you go to a convention. There's bad people there. You go to a, a resort. There's going to be, you know, you, I've been to a resort before where nothing bothered me. And then I've been to, to a resort where I was almost like room bound because I just kept seeing Horrible supernatural things outside my door. I'll give you an example. I was in, in Hawaii once, and and I, I would open the door, and there'd be this girl taking photographs from across a balcony that was on the other side, and you could see down into the floor below, and then other the other side of the room across the railing, and then my room. And every time I come out of the room, she started taking pictures, and then she would run into like one of the master suites at the end of the hall, and 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 just open it without a key and disappear in there. And this went on over and over again. Flash bulbs, you know, there's just like like flashing picture after picture, boom, 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 and I'm like, what the hell? I don't understand. I'm nobody. What's you know, the, the bartender seemed to be in on it, and the, the people seemed to be coordinating. And I'm, I'm like, you know, and then I've been there another time where it was just nothing. I, I can't believe the level, the levels involved of communication and uh, other dimensionality where this stuff is cooked up. I, I can't, it's hard to even fathom how they get so coordinated to where if you let it get under your skin, well, you're pushed back into uh, a recluse again. So, you know, note to self, uh, with the Lord's permission, with the Lord's inspiration, I fight. I've also had the Lord tell me not to go somewhere, not to do something. So it's it's got to be that, that that really informs it. But anyway, I will leave you with a positive note that uh, you're all doing a lot better than you were. So, so am I. We're all informed now in a way that we hadn't been in the past. And I think that is, that is like 90% of the battle right there. We know what to pray for. And we know how to pray for one another now in a way we haven't. Uh, 20 on 20 is coming up. Uh, it'll be Saturday night, Sunday morning. It'll be really 3 o'clock a.m. Sunday morning. We'll be 20 on 20. And we're going to continue praying for the end of human... So I, I, you know, we, 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 had, uh, you know, we had backed Trump because he was... You know, ending the human trafficking. I mean, he's the only one that's actually done anything about it. We have never had a president before, ever, that did anything about it. You know, I mean, I guess it's just been a, been a bust, but he has. And he's done more lately, too. And and so he, he's called it his number one priority to end human trafficking. When we started praying about this with Govinda's initiative, you know, Govinda Tidball, his initiative of the uh, 20 on 20, there, there was no plan to even address human trafficking. Now it's the number one reason, to, to, besides drugs and stuff, to be building the, that wall down. It's the front and center of the news today. So I'm grateful for that and people that, uh, you know, when you say you, you hate Trump and all that, I think 
maybe the thing to do is to take that into consideration rather than making your stupid, starky comments on my channels. Because I won't, you know, I, I can't relate. When the, the guy has delivered on human trafficking. He's saved children. We don't know any other president that's done that. At least a little bit of respect. You know, come on. This, this, a little bit of respect, please. One guy came on my Facebook page. He goes, you mean he stopped eating children at Bohemian Grove? Yeah. And I was like, I, the guy uh, claims to be a, a T.I., a fellow T.I. But see that, no, I mean, I forgive, but I, I just, I thought human trafficking was a really big part of the problem. I got two major issues out here. We got the, we, you know, the, the, the gang stalking, electronic harassment, bullying, all that, that organized, organized pain and suffering of, of a certain group of people called a wheat, if you will. And then, then the other one is human trafficking of children and also of young women and now more middle-aged women to uh, places like Saudi Arabia, other places where they buy American women, American children, especially that have blonde hair for some reason, of course they die, can die it, but I mean, yeah, this is stuff you find out. Uh, you know, they, they pay $100,000 for, for, you know, for, uh, for, 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 for a person, pretty much, if they can get an American. Well, they might only pay 10000 for some other, from some other place in the world. They pay 100000 200 500 who knows, you know, they'll pay. So the industry is so huge here, hundreds of billions of dollars a year. That makes it the biggest industry. Did you know this? It's the biggest, the, the, the American trafficking sex trade, and that's dealing with Americans now because of the high demand for American sex, I guess. I guess it makes them feel powerful. Stealing and destroying the most powerful country. Uh it's a bigger industry. It's the largest industry that we have in the, in the world today and larger than all of Silicon Valley put together. How about that? I'd say that's the number one problem, wouldn't you? And the border is part and parcel that same thing. Of course, we're trafficking, they're trafficking mainly at the border children, child sex slaves. Those children, when they're taken, they're never, they never see the light of day again. I hope you understand that. Either do these women. They're abducting women out of parking lots in America who are in their 40s, 50s, into a van, you know, to the airport, whatever, drugged, wake up in some foreign country somewhere, put, put into the brothel, whatever, and... And never, never to be seen or heard from again. They, they, they might be upscale. You know, they like upscale women that have, you know, right, upscale women bring more money in the marketplace. So an upscale, middle class, upper middle, you know, she's got a BMW, she just shopped at, uh, you know, <clears throat> I don't know what, like Vons or something, I don't know, some store, you know, shopping, coming to the parking lot with, uh, you know, uh, a shopping cart with clothing and food or whatever it is, heading to the BMW, you know, and having the blonde hair coiffed and having a nice outfit on and, you know, being, a, a, a you know, a attractive and uh, seemingly successful and, and self, uh, self-possessed, self if you will, you know, in other words, in self-esteem. Uh, and it takes two seconds to grab her Throw in a van, there's three guys, there's a guy that's a lookout who goes in the store, who looks out, he gets on his little walkie-talkie, his phone, he tells him outside, get ready, we got one coming out. She's coming out, two-man team on the van, one man, one man inside the store, and voila, she's gone. Now, they don't really report on this that much. This is information I got off a video from... About a year ago, uh, that happened. It was going to happen to this one woman. She got away, but they don't report on all the incidents of this. 
And they don't tell you because it lo- makes the Democrats look bad. It makes it look like there's an emergency. You know, it, it, if you report on all the trafficking going on the border, it would break your heart. They don't report on all the children being trafficked off the border because it looks like the Democrats are causing it. And, and everything, the whole news media is the Democrats, basically. Or the left, if you will. I don't even know what it is anymore. Or the, you know, I guess the rhino Republicans. I, there's not many people that are really patriots I mean, on either side. It's just like, it's horrible. But the news media doesn't report on it. Because it makes a certain political party look bad. Because, right? I mean, you know, and it makes, it, it makes what Trump's doing look good. And so they've also published um, that they'll be getting rid of Trump in, um, by May. I think they, they put out a, a, a pre-article, May 20th or something, that everyone is celebrating Trump's gone. I'll tell you, you Trump haters out there, when he's gone, something's going to hit you right in the face after a while. And the program is going full tilt down the toilet. You realize that it's gruff, yeah, sure. Opinionated, yeah. Insulting the people, whatever. Being brusque, brawler, sure. But results, actual facts, actual statistics, you're not, it's going to go back to this old sort of Obama ask, get nothing done, and basically put the world into slavery, the New World Order, use California and Venezuela as a model bring that in globally, use genocide to get rid of the excess people. And uh, it's just, you know, basically, the, you know, try to bring forth Antichrist. I know people think it's tough, but the idea of Antichrist r- ruling and reigning a person indwelled by Satan r- ruling from Jerusalem, it's very possible. Seems to be the age of the Gentiles is over. So the focus will return back to Israel We'll have to see. I mean, that's, uh, well, one thing that makes me think that is that they're already apparently practicing or even doing animal sacrifices, which is, you know, basically Daniel talking about the abomination of desolation. And when you see them doing this, the bringing back the sacrifice, the burnt offering, uh, that would be the trigger for the reign of uh, Antichrist and the reign of, um, that would be the actual... Uh, clarion call to the end the great tribulation the great smackdown the great end of this entire situation and i am not one of these people that believes this can go on forever i I believe that uh seeing the amount of evil that i'm seeing and seeing the exposure of the evil is prophetic those of you who have prophetic gifts right you all know who you are don't you agree all the exposure of all the evil, it's a prophetic marker showing us that the time of the end is not far. Well, what else could it be? Because no other time in history has there been this kind of exposure of corruption and evil. And then the real prophecy of it is they'll continue to do evil even though the light of day is glaring on them and they're no longer hidden. They continue to do it. That is another prophetic marker, in my opinion. When I say marker, I mean a marker for the end. A marker. Like, you've got to pick up the marker. It's another marker that is just also showing the way to a finale. Showing us oh, the Mandela effect. I look at it as another marker. You know, it's like, okay, there's another verse I saw a change in the Bible, and it was... Um, uh, there used to be, oh gosh, I can't remember the verse now. Uh, Rich had it. I can't remember it now, but, uh, had to do with rods, uh, being substituted for the, for the word serpents, uh, regarding, uh, the Pharaoh and, you know, Exodus and all that. So I, um, I don't know. I, I mean, I could be wrong. This could just be all these anomalies just coming up to, to just to, to show us anomalies for the hell of it. But I don't think so. I I feel like once the evil is exposed, shows us the cup is full. uh, Once all the evil is exposed, then then I believe the Lord moves. 
people are without excuse. It's just like there's no reason not to repent, you know. I'll make the plea one more time. It's it's for you. Repent. Accept the goodness of God and the pathway of God and, and just don't look back. Big message for everybody, including yours truly and every all of us. Let's not look back, but let's go forth with the confidence that, that Jesus is leading us. And let's just put all our eggs in one basket. He is the pearl of great price. You sell every other pearl you have and buy that one. And be at peace. And I will see you next time. And uh, oh, we're having fun here today. You know, I mean, it's heavy, but it's fun too, right? Okay.